So one of the things they don't seem to tell you when you want to start a YouTube channel is how complicated it is, how expensive it is. Uh, come on, you pe- uh, I didn't realize like how much cameras were, how much lenses were, microphones, camera stands, lighting. I didn't know how much knowledge it took to just shoot a basic video. I didn't think it'd be that complicated. I had a nice camera, I thought that would work. You know, I could shoot the daylight or whatever the case may be. After making a few videos, I quickly realized how inept I was to doing this correctly, or at least trying to do it with quality, right? You know, I have a Sony camera that my wife uses for photography, and I thought I would just, you know, start using that and start making videos, but I quickly realized the lens on that camera was not very good. It was too too zoomed in. It was really hard to do vlogs or close-up shots or anything like that. And I just started using my iPhone. You know, the iPhone's easy, it's quick, point and shoot, shoots 4K if you want it to, and you know, it does a great job, but I found that there's issues with shooting with an iPhone, especially your personal iPhone. So when you're recording videos and someone calls you, it ruins it. Every time you get a text message, it dings, ruins the video. So as I promised, I was going to bring you guys along for the ride with starting a YouTube channel and kind of, you know, bringing you guys along to all the stuff that I've had to do or all the stuff that I need to do in order to make a good YouTube channel and make quality videos. I've already bought some stuff and I'm still working on buying more stuff as far as, you know, mics. I have a shotgun mic that I use with my iPhone currently. I've bought, you know, a halo light and a couple other soft boxes. And I have some more stuff on order as far as cameras and gimbals and lenses and microphones, lapel mics, wireless mics, ND filters. <laughs> like, the list just keeps getting bigger. But right now I'm shooting this video on my iPhone 13 Pro and the quality's pretty good, right? But like I said, there's issues with trying to shoot with an iPhone, especially when it's your personal iPhone. And also too, I've noticed, you know, just within the month that I've been shooting with this, that the battery is starting to die a lot quicker. Um, if I do use it to record throughout the day, like I can't have my phone charged for the things I need it, you know, for like calls, texts, stuff like that. So I decided, you know, that I'm gonna buy a good lens, right? So I have this, Sony, what is this? A Sony A6400. Um, and the lens that it has on it is, you know, 18 to 135. And this is a great camera, right? It's a crop lens. So it's not like the highest end camera you can buy, but it is a expensive camera. I think I paid 1300 bucks for this a year or two ago. And my wife uses it for photography. I use it for photography for <clears throat> kids playing sports or whatever the case may be. And this lens works great for that. The thing that sucks about this lens and what you want for YouTube and for videos and vlogging, whatever else, is a wide angle lens, right? So this goes to 18 millimeters is the, the widest that this lens will go. And the aperture on it is 3.5 to 5.6, which is very high for something you want for video, for low light issues, stuff like that. I'm gonna put this on the camera stand and I'm gonna shoot the camera with this lens, probably further away than where the iPhone is, just so you can get a sense of what this lens is for shooting YouTube videos. It's not bad, but it's not great. And then I'll show you the lens I bought to use on this camera frame so that I can use this camera to shoot videos instead of my iPhone. Let's get into it. So here's the Sony with the 18 to 135 mil lens. And I don't know if you can see the phone right here in the corner, but the camera is about oh, two or three feet behind the iPhone. Um, and that's the problem. If you want to vlog or carry the camera around with you while you're walking around and doing stuff, you, I can't hold the camera out this far. So the camera right now is about four or five feet away from me. And this lens isn't great for that. So now I'm gonna pop on this lens and we're gonna see the, the difference in quality. And I'm gonna keep that stand in the same location so you can see how much more you see with just changing the lens. All right, so the lens that I got for this is basically a Sony lens. Um, it's an 11 millimeter f1.8 aperture as opposed to the lowest setting on this, which is an 18 millimeter 3.5 aperture. So this should give us a wider field of view and also a lot more light. So I can use this lens in a lower light setting, right? Which is also a big plus. And for vlogging, 
for vlogging, it's going to be way better because I can hold the camera out, you know, to here as opposed to way out here, which just isn't practical. So here's the lens. Um, it comes with lens protector. You can see the glass difference too. So if you look at the glass, this one's way bigger because it has bigger, bigger lenses. Pop this guy on. And this lens, I bought it from Best Buy and it was 500 bucks on sale, normally 550, I think. So, and this was a cheap one. So the one I was gonna buy besides this one was a, a Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter F.2 F aperture. And that was seven, well, you can get them online for 650-ish. Um, but I don't really feel like I need, you know, to change the focal point, I guess, or whatever you call it, I don't know. Don't, I don't, I'm not a camera expert, so. But I just, I didn't feel like I was gonna be holding the camera out and constantly like changing, you know, the zoom on it. I just wanted a set aperture, a set focal length, and just, you know, hold it out and use it. So I'm gonna set this back on that camera stand in the exact same spot and you're gonna see how much wider this is. So now you can clearly see, I did not move the camera stand or anything. Now you can see the phone that I'm recording on right now and you can also see how much wider the field of view is. So how much more you can see. So now that you see what it looks like on an iPhone, I'm gonna put the camera here with the new lens and we're gonna see the difference in quality and angle, the bokeh, all that. So now here we have the Sony 6400 with the 11 millimeter lens recording. Um, I feel like this is gonna be way easier to make videos on. I'm gonna have to get used to not looking at the screen above the lens, but other than that, I mean, I feel like this will improve the quality of the videos and hopefully make editing a little easier as far as resolution and everything else goes. The only thing that's a downside besides using my phone is I can just airdrop all the videos straight to my Mac and it's just a way simpler process. Now I'm gonna have to pull out an SD card and put it in my computer, but that's not really much of a big deal. Um, just me complaining. Anyways, yeah, this is just a small video update trying to keep you guys tagged along as far as everything it takes to start a YouTube channel or build a YouTube channel or make a YouTube video. And I think it's just fun to watch people progress in their YouTube career. I like watching a lot of people that start from zero and make it big. Also too, I plan on making a video after the first month of being monetized. So I was monetized the 1st of August. Um, so at the end of the month, I'm gonna run all the numbers. We're gonna go through it. I'm basically gonna show you what it pays on my first month of being monetized through YouTube with, I think I'm at 1300 subscribers right now. But we'll cover all that on that video. So just keep an eye out for that. I think it's cool to see creators with a small subscriber list and low views um, makes. And I also just kind of want to be transparent. And so everybody that wants to start a YouTube channel or is afraid to start a YouTube channel or isn't sure if it's worth starting a YouTube channel can at least come and, you know, see everything that it takes to start a YouTube channel and also what you could potentially make, you know, a month in, six months in, a year in, two years in. I'm just going to keep documenting this. So I'm going to go hard at it at least for a year, see where it goes. I don't really have any plans on stopping. I don't need to stop. Regardless if I keep wrenching or find a new career or whatever the case may be I'm gonna keep making YouTube videos. So and then also too, so I don't even have that many subscribers right now But I'm getting companies reaching out to me to do reviews or to check out their tools So the first one on my list is King Bolin eDiag These guys sent this tool to me for free. So I'm gonna be using it over the next week or so, and then I'm gonna be making a, a review on it. So for all you entry level guys out there, or DIYers that want like a, a simple scan tool, this is gonna be one of your options, and I'm gonna let you know if it's worth your money, time and investment to get this, or if we should just chuck it. So stay tuned for that as well.